welcome to Holiday Romance in Continual. I'm your host, Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce. And today we're going to be talking with a number of authors about the holiday romances they write, the holiday romances they love, and holiday romance in particular. So let's uh, go through and have everybody give their uh, introduction, starting with RJ. Hi, um, I'm RJ Scott. Um, I'm the author of probably, uh, I don't know, 140 odd MM romances. Uh, my first Christmas romance I wrote was The Christmas Throwaway, which is now 10 years old. And I don't think I've missed a Christmas since. So I have quite a backlist of Christmas books. Um, one of my favourite Christmas authors um, is Eli Easton. Uh, I would reread her books over and over again. And um, Ms. Losey down there as well with her, her Christmas. Well, they're all called Christmas something and we're on to book two this year. And also we co-author <clears throat> hockey books and we have quite a few Christmas hockey books as well. And I love Hallmark movies. I'm a complete sap and I love Happy Ever After. So that's me. Awesome, Rachel. Um, I'm actually not an author. I am a um, PA for Vicky and RJ. Um, and I'm a huge Christmas, huge Christmas book fan. Um, and love everything about Hallmark films. I All the old classics as well, you know, White Christmas. Um, yeah, that's me. Great. Eli? Hi, I'm Ela Easton, and I'm uh, I've been writing romance romance since 2013, I think. And uh, my first Christmas romance was Blame It on the Mistletoe, which I think came out in 2013. And um, I've written one ever since. Although to this year, I will have just some audiobooks and a short story out for Christmas. But um, yeah, I just I love it. I've I gorge myself on holiday romances. Um, right after how starting after halloween which i'm a big halloween fan too um and i just i love to read them and i love to write them so yeah great and vicky uh, hi i'm vicky losi i write under the super secret um moniker of vl losi because nobody <laughs> will know it's me <laughs> um i have about I, I guess at last count it was over 50 books i i, I lose count um I've got, okay, I've got a few, quite a few Christmas ones out, solo books and some that I've written with RJ, which are hockey books. Um, yeah, I love Christmas. I love decorating the tree. One of my favorite holiday traditions that I've, I think I've passed down to my daughter um, is decorating the tree to Elvis's Christmas album. And my mother passed that to me and I passed it to my daughter and hopefully she will pass it to somebody else. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I love Christmas. Awesome. And I'm Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic fantasy, urban fantasy, steampunk, and more. And uh, more germane to this panel is Morgan Bryce. I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romances. So the romances I have out there, I'm, I'm way behind everybody else here. I have Lucky Town, which is a Badlands romance that takes place in Pittsburgh. And uh, Dark Rivers is not exactly what you'd call a Christmas book, but it takes place at Christmas and definitely ends on a holiday note. Then uh, I'm in the Christmas at Canem Castle collection, which is uh, multiple authors writing in a fictional castle. And, and uh, my story there is uh, tied back to my uh, Badlands series. And then this year, I've got a, another one coming out, uh, The Christmas Spirit, that's tied to uh, my Kings of the Mountain series. So I'm getting there. I have a long way to catch up on the rest of you guys, <laughs> but I'm getting there. So as, I, let's take it as an author first, and then we'll come back as, as readers. But as an author, what is so attractive about writing a Christmas story? Why do we love doing this? Um, I can go around the circle again or folks can just jump in. Um, I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, Christmas time is like romance on steroids. It's kind of like what you always want in a romance, which is this sort of warm, um, emotional feeling but then like you double that at Christmas time, I think you can get away with, you know, Christmas romance, people want 
something really sappy. Um, they want something really heartwarming and, um, you know, more emotional. And so I think it's, for me, it's just an opportunity to write something even more um, sappy than I would normally write. I think uh, I, t I tend to agree with that. And I mean, add in snow and trapped in a cabin and lost <laughs> kittens and Christmas miracles, uh, not of the religious kind, but just, you know, coming back for Christmas. You've got the, the businessman who has to come back and shut down on the company factory and he meets the guy who's <laughs> stayed at home. And so it's just all these kind of lovely, lovely tropes. And they, you, when you pick up a Christmas book, you're, you're guaranteed like that happy ever after um or at least happy for now but i prefer my happy ever after so i just love writing them mm -hmm. vicky yeah yeah I don't, I don't know if i can really add much to what, what the two ladies before me have said um there's just there is just something uniquely magical even if you're not writing paranormal or anything about about a christmas story and uh i, I think a lot of it is is because you know a lot of people are coming back home um, and uh, that adds a, a quality to a story that you might not find any other time of the year. Um, and snow, yeah, snow adds. No, we don't get a lot of snow in England. I mean, we only have to get, uh, I don't know, that much snow and the whole country shuts down because we're not just not set up for Christmas, uh, set up for snow at all. So when you watch hol holiday movies like The Holiday, you know, where they do the house swap and she ends up in the Christmas cottage and it's all snowing. No, we don't have that really. <laughs> we have the cottage and we do have snow in Scotland and there's some snow up there and we do have maybe one or two days of snow, but um, it's a bit of an event. So I'm really jealous of you guys in like Pennsylvania with all your snow. <laughs> it's just not fair. I want some. We wish we could send you yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, think I just I just moved, so this year I won't have as much snow, but yeah. It's 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 really romantic when it first falls and then like oh, yeah. the next day it's that's so romantic, but <laughs> <laughs> Part of Pennsylvania that, that I grew up in um, is the part that, that uh, Vicki's written about in her Eerie Vampires. And uh, we used to get 100 inches of snow a year because we'd get the lake effect coming off of wow. Lake Eden. I don't think with climate change, they get that much snow anymore. And we've been in North Carolina now for a while. And so an inch of snow shuts everything down for four days. And uh, we've, you know, that that's a nice thing because nobody's making you go out in it like they do in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Um, but I think but it, is ma it is magical, you know, that's why all the Hallmark movies have it. Especially when it's, it's untouched and, and it's perfect and it's not, you know, it hasn't gotten dirty and it doesn't have tire tracks in it and it's all just, you know, beautiful. It's yeah, like, I think it's that you moment where you're kind of sit oh, sorry, where you're sitting on a chair and you've got your hot chocolate and your Kindle and you've lit some candles and it's kind of dark outside and it's very you're kind of cozy and you're lost in a magical world and that is just just how I love my Christmas books and you, you have this image you might end up reading it on the train or in bed blasting at night but the thought of sitting and with your hot chocolate and and that's the kind of writing we want to do because we want people to feel at the end oh that was really nice so yeah. Yeah, I think the other thing for me with Christmas stories is, you know, not everybody's real life Christmas is as perfect as what we get in our books. You know, sometimes those family gatherings really aren't any fun or you don't have some place to go back to. And in the Christmas books, you can have all that and love too. You know, you, you generally have the family or the found family. You have the big dinner. You have Christmas with all the trappings. And, and then you also have falling in love and the snow. Um, so <laughs> well, I think, I, I think, uh, a fantasy. Exactly. I think what you said is I really love it when Christmas books not only reflect that, but have a character that is finding that, you know, like mm -hmm. Christmas throwaway by RJ Scott is one of my favorite books. And it's because, you know, it starts out with this young, you know, I guess he's at, uh, like 18 years old. Yeah. He's just, just younger. He's just 
too young to kind of have like the whole kind of physical side of the relationship the first year that they meet so he's, he's yeah so he, but he's you know he's homeless and he doesn't have a family and that's it's christmas eve and he's freezing to death on a park bench and he's rescued by this really kind cop and you know it's I really love it when when someone in the in the book finds that finds that family finds that Christmas feeling um, through the course of the plot. So we've got snow and family or found family and Christmas with all the trappings. What are what else are some of the ingredients to mix up the perfect Christmas novel? And and Rachel, jump in here too, please. Um, humor. I think, yeah. yeah, I think you really need, it's nice to have a bit of humour. It's nice to have a bit of the um, sort of grumpy one and then the sunshiny one, you know, the one the one who loves Christmas and the one who's like, bah humbug. Um, and getting them clashing, I love that. I think that's that's really good fun. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, yeah the holiday love... elf trope. Yeah. <laughs> elf are good. <laughs> I also love it when you not only have people who are coming from, you know, having a great Christmas, having no Christmas or whatever, but when they do meet the families and there's also a real difference in the family, like in Lucky Town, uh, one of my characters has a very cold, stiff, um, upper class white family from the South where it's just not fun. And he goes to Pittsburgh with his uh his fairly new boyfriend to this huge chaotic Italian Catholic family with 10 kids and all of them are cops. And That's perfect. That's the perfect <laughs> Christmas story. <laughs> that is. So everybody, you know, all of his older brothers kind of pick on him and he's seeing this whole new side and it's just chaos and glorious chaos. And that's kind of fun too, is, is getting to experience a, a different kind of family. Uh, as well. I think Sorry. one of the ingredients that I really like is um, I, I like hurt comfort in general. A lot of my yeah. books are, are hurt, hurt comfort, but especially at holiday time, you know, that you, you have somebody who's, um, you know, a, a, an underdog character who's finding that um, help. It can have a touch of Christmas magic at it. Like, um, the book I wrote last year, Angels Sing, was kind of based on um, It's a Wonderful Life, but uh, you know, you have a character who's just really down on his luck and he's trying, he's a single dad, he's very young, he's trying his best and he's just, he's struggling and he's not, he's not quite making it. And you know, Christmas time, there's sort of this Christmas miracle that happens where he gets the help that he needs. And so I, I really like that kind of, um, you know, Things turning around at Christmas time, her comfort, sort of a little, little bit of a Christmas miracle going on. Which is kind of what we all hope for, right? You know, we all kind of have a Christmas miracle of our own that we'd like to see happen, I think. You know, oh, so it's good to see that yeah. happen. Snow would be fab. No. <laughs> You're not getting snow, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> 2010. <laughs> I also some of my favorite um Christmas books and I go back and read them quite a lot they're um MF and they're um Nora Roberts <gasps> yes we met her um so yeah and it's the um Shirley Goodness and I can't remember the other one and it's about three angels who um come down to earth and they're all given um people that they've got to help out and it's disastrous everything goes wrong and they push the wrong people together and they're very funny but they're very very sweet and it's these <laughs> silly funny angels that just get sent out to do these dreadful jobs um but yeah i keep thinking i'd love somebody to write an mm version of it <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe next year <laughs> tropes that go well with the holidays um, you know, I mentioned uh, her comfort, which is one of my total favorites. But uh, you know, oh. there's so many great tropes. How do how how do they adapt to the holiday setting? I like I like, I like opposites attract. I like I like that a lot. The the one I have coming out this Christmas um, is is well, enemies to lovers, opposite to track, and um, I, I I like I like that dynamic 
you know, like it, and in the Christmas pun that that's the one that I have coming out this year. Um, fella comes back to a small town, and um, he and the and the mayor of this tiny tiny town in in north central Pennsylvania. I don't know where I got that study from. Um, they were they they did not get along as children, and and he bullied this fella terribly, and. But with the miracle of Christmas and everything, they slowly find their way to working past their differences, which I think that's also part of Christmas is um, forgiving and opening up your arms to others who you might not have at any other time of the year, that brotherhood and that love of your fellow man. So yeah, I, I like that trope a lot for, for a Christmas story. Yeah. How about you, RJ? Besides I've, snow. No, I've got a link. <laughs> well, besides snow, obviously. I've got trapped in the snow, stranded together, false proximity. I mean, right. that's a classic. Uh, royalty, secretly a prince. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got back home slash road trip. So, you know, they're going back home, but, you know, they need a lift across country. I know somebody who's written that. And they need a lift across country and then they fall in love. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, fake relationship. That's excellent. I need a boyfriend yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. Perfect. That's it. yeah. Um, the Grinch learns to love Christmas. That's another one of my favourites. Christmas magic and fairy tale. The workaholic, who's all work and no play, and hasn't got time for Christmas. He hasn't got time for this nonsense. Uh, and then he breaks down and gets stranded in a cabin. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> um, best friend of family member. So like best the right. brother's best friend or best or friend's brother. Classic either way. Um, yeah. Small town romance. Small town romance is on my list because there's nothing better than the Hallmark movies when you have the, the big city guy. Uh, no, the big city. Okay, we're talking Hallmark and as yet there hasn't been the MM Hallmark so far. But if you've got the, the girl who's got the fiance in the city and she comes back from small town and and then she falls for the guy who lives in the small town and that, that, kind, of, that kind of idea. Second Chances and Old Flames, that's on my list. Mm -hmm. Best Friends to Lovers, Celebrity mm -hmm. and Millionaires, because you know, millionaires have Christmas too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one Night Stand, uh, anything to do with law enforcement. So if you've got cops yeah. in New York City, or you were, and last on my list is any other Christmas theme. <laughs> my Christmas bingo this year and I'm going um, to try and read a book from from each of those categories because I just think they're... and the soldier writing to yeah, the I don't know you probably can't soldier read. writing to the single mum uh, uh, yeah no, no you can't see it oh yeah yeah we did sort and of a coming... yeah we did a, a sort of an unusual one last was it last year or two it was two years ago RJ and um and our walker and a bunch of us did a, a series of uh, for Christmas, which involved a traveling ornament that was sort of magical and Love it traveled it. through the ages. So and every good. every story was it that the angel would bring true love to love whoever it. owned the the ornament oh at Christmas time. And so that was sort of an unusual one, and I thought it was fun. It was fun to write. Hey, I was going to ask you about series because I, I love the Christmas Angel. Um, I'm a sucker for Vale Valley. Um, Valentine's Inc. has done it snowed in. Um, there was a snow globe series last year. And I'm sure there are many, many others. Um, but do you tend to write two series? Do you tend to write standalones? Uh, you know, argue the point. What do you, what do you like best? Um, do you want me to go first? Sure, um, I've got, um, I like to write a standalone every Christmas on my own um, because they allow me to explore characters that are completely separate to all my series books, which people are expecting. So, for example, Single Dads 4, um, which is out in January, I could have made that a Christmas book and had that, that series have a Christmas book, which I have done before with things like Texas Christmas and uh, snow in Montana but I like that standalone feel that kind of like people can just pick it up read and not have to know any of the characters and and they just they just have this just solid Christmas book so that's my point of view but I equally I will write I very often have three releases at Christmas where I have a series book a standalone book and like an anthology type 
book as well so as a reader um i prefer a standalone christmas book um purely because i might not have read the series um and i don't want to then somebody says oh this christmas book's fantastic and then i find out that i've got to read seven books before i can get to that book <laughs> you know? um so i quite like a novella from a series um that that has sort of you know the characters that we know and love and we find them all getting together at christmas or just two other new, you know something small but for a full length christmas novel i want it to be completely standalone um because I want to be able to pick one up, read it, put it down, get another one. Because um, sort of through December, that's pretty much all I'll read is Christmas books. Mm. Um, now, a lot of the series that I've read, though, like the ones, like the one um, Eli mentioned with uh, Angel and um, some of those, they were standalones just with a common element, which kind of gets around that issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's there's something in common whether it's the setting like with Vale Valley or the snow globe or the ornament so there's a common thread i've discovered so many new authors as a reader reading those series that maybe i wouldn't have come across on my own or or wouldn't have come across right then but because i'm i'm plowing my way through the series um i i discover new people and then follow them sort of home to find their the rest of their work so you know that that can work too but those tend to not leave you stranded in the middle yeah mm -hmm. yeah i like those because you know typically they just you know you see a lot of books with sort of similar covers or they're all part of the snow globe series or the christmas angel series or whatever to me that's exciting because it's like i have this cornucopia of of potential reads there but it's it's nice that they're all standalone um but I'll typically just sort of pick and choose then. It's like if there's eight of them, I might read two of them, you know, or something like that. We've got, got a, a, like, like anthologies too, Christmas anthologies, mm -hmm. where, you know, you have a compilation of 10 or 15 authors. Um, and I also have found many, many authors I wouldn't have read otherwise from anthologies, you know, so I, I really like that. But yeah, I, I, most of my Christmas novels are also standalone. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I, I used to get the Dream Spinner anthologies every year, and I discovered a lot of new authors through that. They're Advent series. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's kind of nice, just getting something every day. Yeah, yeah. We did a uh, Christmas at Canaan Castle uh, anthology last year, and that was seven authors writing in the same fictional castle with the same uh, holiday ball happening, but then we all had our own stories. So the, the real bear there was, okay, where are all the Christmas trees? So you don't have 30 foot trees mysteriously moving all around, you know, the lawn and <laughs> making sure our characters didn't trip over each other. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and we brought it back for trick or treat this year um, just because our stories were all standalone, but they, they were in the same setting. So that, that adds to a little complexity for the authors trying to not, like I said, trip over each other. What about um Yeah, we did a, a, a oh, hockey series. We we did a, a hockey there was how many it was five of us, wasn't there? Five horses. And we we were a, it was a charity auction, a bachelor charity auction, and mm -hmm. we all had to decide where the podium was and who was the MC and you know what colour the tablecloths were. Because it, it was it's it's like all these separate stories, but they were all happening in the same hotel. They all had to include this event. But it was really interesting. And also, you know, we had to read all five stories and make sure they gelled. So. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always the complex part when, when you have those interlocking pieces. But then when it works, it can be a lot of fun for the reader because it's like you're constantly shifting the camera perspective to see other things that are going on at the same time. And it makes the whole thing feel bigger and more real somehow. So that's yeah. kind of cool, too. What, um, so we've talked a lot about, you know, what we've written. What are some of those other favorites that you come back to? And this can be books, this can be movies. We've mentioned a few of them, TV shows. What are, what's your must have Christmas list? Oh goodness, let me go first. I have, um, 
Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, decorating the tree to Elvis Presley. It's not Christmas unless you listen to Elvis Presley. Stan would agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't tend to, um, my Christmas go-to shows tend to be the old animated ones that I watched as a kid, um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with Burl Ives, and um, The Grinch, the original Grinch. <laughs> um, those are the kind of things that I tend to go back to every year, and I'm, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many times I've seen them, and I can sing all the songs by heart. There's just something about going, I, I guess it's going back to your childhood, and when Christmas was even mm -hmm. more magical and more wondrous than it is when you're an adult, so those those tend to be my kind of um, holiday things that I go back to are those kind of old Christmassy kind of kids things. Um, oh. Yeah, mine's White Christmas every year. Have to watch White Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, it's we sit there and bless him. My poor husband has had to sit and watch it for the last twenty odd years as well. Every single year, I think he probably knows a word <laughs> word now as well. Um, and then. If I can manage it, I'll try and get It's a Wonderful Life in, but he doesn't really do black and white films, so we kind of struggle with that one. Um, always watch Scrooged, um, and we always, um, with the boys, even though they're, what, 16 and 18 now, um, we will watch Home Alone um, and Elf because we will just sit there and laugh and laugh and laugh all the way through. So we do love that. And then I have on in the background um, Christmas 24, which is the channel that we have over here. Um, we don't get the Hallmark channel over here. Um, but uh, yeah, I have Christmas 24 on just with the Christmas films on constantly all day. Um, and I just leave that on. Um, Christmas Day, we tend to watch a Christmas film as well <laughs> to be fair um, again just on in the background while we're doing other things um, we um, yeah and they're, they're pretty much all romances <laughs> yeah we have um, Christmas obviously is going to be a bit different this year but we have uh, we have lots of Christmas music I start playing Christmas Christmas music in July when I start writing my Christmas book <laughs> so it's a little bit in advance um, but I have a favorite song um, do they know it's Christmas uh, do they know it's Christmas by Greg Lake um, which is my absolute favorite Christmas song and I do love Christmas music and I will I will play that for more or less on repeat for the whole of December much to my husband's distress um, for it's there's a lot of food i mean you, you can't tell can you by looking at me but there's a lot of food <laughs> with um special things bits and pieces from places like marks and spencer which won't mean anything to the americans here but rachel understands yep. mm -hmm. um so yeah food mostly <laughs> and family <laughs> mm -hmm. how about you um well, some of my favorite Christmas books are our day's Christmas throwaways is one um, Turkey in the Snow by Amy Lane is another one of my all time favorites. I don't know why, but it's just like, it's just really cute. Um, Snow Ho by Ethan Day. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> Merry, Merry Gentleman by Josephine Miles. Mm -hmm. And The Fir Tree by Anita Sunday. I don't know if, how many people have read that, but it's really cute. Yeah. It's about this, this guy who, um, has a crush on his neighbor and he does this elaborate prank involving this fir tree uh so I, I i do tend to read a lot i mean probably even more than watching movies or listening to music i will read uh christmas romances through the holiday um i also love elf and Di and die hard is another one of my favorite well, I christmas watches because i'm sort movie. of a yeah and I like actually Christmas horror movies, which sounds stupid, but things like Krampus. I mean, I, I'm I'm a big horror buff anyway, so um, I tend to sort of mix up those genres when I can. Um, and then having Hallmark on, I'm, I just you know, it's what's funny about Hallmark is it's not even about the movie. It's like they've gotten more and more elaborate with their set dressing. You know, it's it's just like every scene is just 
cram full of like Christmas trees and Christmas ornaments and Christmas pies. And it's just almost more about the scenery really. Um, Cause a lot of their plots are very similar, but it's just, I will watch that a lot just and it doesn't even again it doesn't even really matter so much what the movie is it's just it's just the, the setting is always so Christmassy mm -hmm. but I do like the really old um sort of the older uh hall of fame ones that where it's a little bit there's a little bit more of darkness in it um you know it's, it, I, I kind of it's a, I guess that's part of the horror thing, but you know, I, I do like like it's a wonderful life is one of my favorite Christmas stories because it does have that tinge of of darkness in it that then you know is sort of overcome as part of the Christmas story. And I I did a little bit of that in uh, in one of my books, um, Merry Christmas, Mr. Miggles, mm -hmm. has sort of this tragic event that happens during the book that is then sort of turned around by this holiday miracle and. So I, I kind of have a soft spot for those sorts of stories too. They're not as common. Yeah, I, I love It's a Wonderful Life. Um, I think one of my all time favorites is A Christmas Carol, the George C. Scott version and the Muppet Christmas uh, with Michael Right, Kane. exactly, that's very dark. <laughs> and to all of the Muppets, uh, you know. <laughs> I want Christmas music on as early as my family will let me get away with it. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I keep pushing it further and further into early November. Uh, so, and I, I announced this year we're doing the trees early, we're doing the music early because I need a little Christmas right this very minute. Um, but I also love the, the Rudolphs and the Frosties and all of those cartoons and um, stop motion animations that I watched as a kid. I, I got to haul those out. and. I think my guilty pleasure, we, we had this tape um, and that we originally taped off Showtime, you know, back in the 80s. And then we finally were able to, they brought the uh, shows out on their own DVDs finally after the years, but <laughs> Santa's Magic Toy Bag. Okay, guilty pleasure right here. Probably nobody's seen it. It's a Muppet uh, show, but it's about this uh, wannabe elf who is a total screw up and he, but he's very creative and he comes up with these great ideas and he finally, you know, finds the place where he belongs and it's just, you gotta watch it. Oh, that's made it to the UK. Um, it, have. it was, it, it's the Christmas special you mentioned and everybody goes, huh? But it, um, that, that's one of our family favorites and, and book wise, you know, you mentioned so many of them. Um, I love to plow my way through those series um, and then go looking to see if people have other books for Christmas as well. So um, yeah, that's that's where you'll find me is plowing through the next Snow Globes, Vale Valley, Christmas Angel, you know, all of those because I want to see what they're going to do in the setting or with that that trope next. And um, that to me is is kind of like kind of like opening advent calendars because ooh, ooh, wait, here's another one. Um, but RJ, you brought up food. You know, you can't really have a holiday romance <laughs> without food. <laughs> not that I'm obsessed in any way about no, food. None of us are, absolutely not. But coming yeah. back to food. Yeah. <laughs> what, how do you write food into your holiday books? What role does it play? For oh my God, well, this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually written um, a 70,000 word novel um, called Cupcakes and Christmas and it's oh, basically wow. um, about, it's based around the concept of the Great British Bake Off. So you've got uh, cakes mostly, cupcakes, puddings, sorry, desserts, um, icing, snowball fights, a snowman, a hotel in the in the mountains in Banff near Lake Louise so basically every single chapter is has food in it of some sort mostly oh man food. I need to argue for that <laughs> and, and I mean I think food does food is always you know the the cute meat sorry the cute meat, mm -hmm. the meat cute, where you have like you know do you want to come up to my room and have a cake or I'll cook <laughs> you spaghetti. I can't cook my chows, but I can cook spaghetti. That's what they often say. Um, so it does, it, it's a way of getting somebody up to your room as well. So I've got to your place. So yeah, I think it plays a big part. 
Anybody else want to weigh in on food here? Christmas dinner. Memorable foods you remember from books or things that made you want to go out and try a recipe or recipes you've included? Well, Christmas dinner in obviously Christmas books. Um, I always like reading about what other people have for their Christmas dinners. Because yeah. I always think ours is quite boring and quite, you know, turkey, potatoes, bit of beef, pigs in blankets, Yorkshire pudding, bit of gravy. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it, job done, really, isn't it? Bit of veg. <laughs> and you're all right, but it's nice seeing what other people have. Um, so, yeah, I, I do like reading about that. You guys have anything you want to throw in there on food and, and family and festivities? Um, I, I tend to, like, um, I, I find myself doing this a lot when I write, is um, I tend to go back to what, of course, what I had as a child. And um, uh, I had a lot of relatives who lived right outside of Pittsburgh. And it was a very strong um, Polish community. So a lot of, a lot of my stories will have, um, um, uh, like Rachel said, pigs in a blanket. We have halukis and halukis mm -hmm. and um, nut rolls. Like my, I can remember my great aunt working tirelessly for weeks before Christmas to make nut roll for the church to sell. So those are the kind of things that I tend to, and I, I bring in, and then afterwards I'm like, oh, yep, there's great Aunt Jojo's nut roll again. That shows, <laughs> seems to show up a lot. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I think it's just, um, I don't think I have a lot of food in my storage, which is kind of odd, but um, I mean, for me, I think it's, you know, that, that sense of family, you know, does come in when you have the, the family gathering, and, you know, it's, it's part of that just her comfort where, you know, to me, food is about taking care of other people and about comforting other people. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an act of um, caretaking almost. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a lot of that feeling, I think, in Christmas stories where it's, it's part of showing your, your love for someone. Yeah. And, and I think the I, I love what Rachel said about seeing what other people do and kind of getting to be a voyeur for other people's meals and the food is love thing because um, not only can you get the found families together and and invite people to your table to to make sure everybody has a place to go but I know like in Lucky Town um, Simon was very very used to the there's, there's a ham and there's potatoes and that's it. And, and it's, it's not, you know, it's just a small meal for a small group of people. And then he's got this huge Italian sprawling family where everybody brings things and then there's the antipasta and then there's the desserts. And then, you know, and he, it's like, I, there are only, you know, 30 of us here who's going to eat all of this. Don't worry about it. We got it covered. You know, so the, the food piece becomes kind of part of that holiday indulgence. And I think, um, it's, it's a wonderful piece to add experientially in these because we all feel okay about, you know, having a few extra here at the holidays. So might as well indulge um, with our imagination. What else ha do you love about holiday books and movies as an author or a reader that we haven't covered yet? Hmm. We covered a lot. <laughs> we, did, we did not. Yeah. Snow. We like snow. Snow. <laughs> I'm going to mail you and some. Cupcakes. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's kind of a fish out of water thing with having a holiday where the contrast is that there isn't any snow. The person is stuck in Florida or the person is, you know, finds themselves under a palm tree. And um, part of. Oh, yeah. We just in, in this in this series, Vicky, mm -hmm. we have, we're in Arizona. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there's a scene where I'm sure we put a Christmas hat on a. That was it. Was a cowboy hat. Oh, okay. No, well, no, a cowboy no, hat with no, Christmas head, feel. Our our head coach in in that one was originally from somewhere in Canada, T Toronto. I can't remember exactly now where he's from. That was 1,800 books ago. Um, but yeah, that, that definite, that fish out of water where you come from Canada and then you move to, you know, Arizona and it's 110 degrees 
and your Christmas tree is a cactus. You know, so like, so he was, he was very much feeling that, yeah. Well, of course, you know, you have folks in the Southern Hemisphere who it's summer for Christmas. And so, yeah. you know, that that's coming up actually in a, in a uh, group project that I'm in where it's all supposed to have a winter theme and somebody spoke up and said, um, New Zealand here, it's summer. Uh, <laughs> so... Maybe one of the things we haven't really touched on yet is the idea of, um, you know, Christmas time is a holiday, it's a break, it's a holiday, and it's also the end of the year. It's about going into the start of a new year. And so it's a really a time where I think people can reassess, um, you know, take, you know, step out of their life and sort of get a, an eagle eye view and reassess where they're at and what they want. And that's why I think, you know, like if you're, if, you know, for example, say you're going home for Christmas back to the small town where you grew up or you know you're just taking time off work or you're going on holiday but it's it's that, it's that time to reassess and I think it, it allows an, uh, an opening for new things to begin um, and for you to just take stock of your life and I think that that can really come into holiday romances whether it's you know the guy who the really the workaholic who's going back home for the holidays or you know the road trip or whatever but you know it's, it's, it's about new beginnings i think which is really you know plays in well with romance definitely well folks this has been a lot of fun we're actually coming up to the end of our time here but i want to make sure we go around and have everybody talk about where people can find you online and even more importantly if you have a new christmas book coming out or a new christmas themed project let us know rj start with you um, Okay, well, you can find me at rjscott.co.uk um, and all my information is on there. Um, this Christmas, I've got a, I'm part of a big um, MM charity anthology, uh, more news on that later. Uh, Cupcakes and Christmas is my Christmas book, which is set around the Great British Bake Off. I have Gideon, which is a boyfriend for hire book. Uh, so that's a fake, the fake boyfriend trope, going home for Christmas. So that's a got quite a few tropes got dogs in it as well um and then i've got a book that um i'm not sure when this interview goes live when does this interview go live it'll be um mid-fall plenty of time for people to pre-order okay no it's not um but we've got a, a new book in the um the railers series that that we have for christmas um with with vicky and i think i think that's it rachel is that it this <laughs> yeah. year this year yeah <laughs> at the moment <laughs> yeah um Eli how about you um well let's see I have a, a story in the Christmas anthology that RJ mentioned I think it's called gifts for the season is that gifts right for the season yeah um so I have a short story in there called uh 12 days of UPS which is actually set during COVID um and involves delivery men <laughs> so uh and then I'm working, currently working on uh, getting three audiobooks done for Christmas. Um, some of my back Christmas stories that I haven't had an audio, I decided I was going to really try to focus on that this year. So I've got um, Tristan Wright is reading Angels Sing. He's wonderful, a wonderful narrator. And um, I just cast a British guy to read Christmas Angel, which is from the, the series. It's set in um, late, uh, set in eight, late, late 1700s England in London and so I finally found the right narrator for that so I'm excited about getting that one out and then um, Desperately Seeking Santa which never had an audiobook so I'm focusing on getting that those three out for December um, and then just a Christmas anthology yeah how about you Vicki oh <laughs> excuse me um well I'm also part of the uh the Christmas anthology with RJ and Eli, <laughs> keep an eye on me, Rachel. Make sure I don't forget anything. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yes, RJ and I do have um, something coming out for the Railers uh, with a Christmassy theme. <laughs> and um, my second book in my Laurel Highlands holiday series, The Christmas Pundit, will be coming out around December 9th. So that that should be enough to get me through this Christmas season. 
I, I think <laughs> as it stands. <laughs> And I'm going to have a Kings of the Mountain story, uh, The Christmas Spirit, in a uh, multi-author uh, big winter giveaway that comes out actually just past Christmas, the beginning of January. So I'm excited about that. Thank you all so much for being with us today. Uh, and thank you for watching and listening. There'll be a lot more holiday goodness and holiday romance here on Continual. So we'll see you online.